What's going on, everybody? Captain Robert and crew here for Marrow Strand episode. Oh no, not Marrow Strand. No, Stormforge. No, no. Episode oh, twenty one. No. Wrong show. It's okay. We'll go. It's fine. It was. We'll go. It was. We'll go. It's okay. <laughs> wow. It was only a couple hours ago. Okay, come on. <laughs> Give me a break. The turnaround time between these two episodes. And. <sighs> It's fine, dude. We'll we'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of Meteorian Call. Cool. I will I will sink this floating city right now. <laughs> I'll make it Meryl Strand. Because we're the flying city. The floating city is Meryl Strand. <laughs> I will turn this airship around. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy pre TwitchCon for all of you little Twitch Conners out there. Uh, I haven't packed. I haven't done anything. I need to do my laundry. I need to do my dishes. I need to do I need everything. To pack right now. <laughs> I leave right after this show. Just out of frame. Just... <laughs> I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm so I'm tired. You got this. <laughs> I'm I'm way too tired for Vegas. But once I get there, and I am immediately pumped with direct oxygen the hotels are my favorite experience of being in vegas because it's like you get a shower the size of your room and it's like optimized for you to stay awake 24 7 like the work like it, it is literally all the worst things for adhd like it's just <laughs> the whole thing is one giant trigger to go ooh. <laughs> yeah young 19 year old by first going to Vegas totally did not have any drinks but um <laughs> all of those experiences absolutely and and learning now <laughs> later in life that I have ADHD a lot of what a lot of what I was experiencing and feeling in Vegas makes a lot more sense right now I just felt very very much more in tune with my surroundings than normal. <laughs> I'm just glad that they don't have 20 sided dice where I can go bet on trauma. You know, that's good. I monetary <laughs> da, money comes and goes. I like to bet on long term character growth and destruction. Those are my kings. <laughs> this is the problem. We had it perfectly. And then Adam screwed the nat 20 versus nat 1 luck the other week and now we have no guiding light we we, we don't know if anything is going to be the same it used to be a fair and simple bet you roll the ones <laughs> for adam every time and you roll the 20s for mud every time and you know that way you just game the system the house never wins now we have no clue how this works i'm telling you i mean i think the safe bet at sam will roll a nat 1. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ouch Wow, I didn't know that I was here to get bullied today. <laughs> By my husband. <laughs> Adam didn't come back. Adam went into surgery and was replaced by the new yeah, mega mega Chad anymore. who rolls twenties. That's a damn. <laughs> that's not Adam anymore, that's Eve. I'm sorry. That's a... <laughs> what is a woman, baby? <laughs> the new better version of man. Or man. <laughs> Whoa, Whoa, <man. laughs> oh, love you Adam anybody got big announcements that they want to let the community know about before we get into investigating I mean yeah sort of um, uh, Paizo announced or at least made it uh, publicly known I can actually talk about it now um, I wrote for Paizo the Pathfind, uh, wrote for Pathfinder um, there upcoming gloss omens divine mysteries book which will come in i think like with the current project trajectory probably like two years time but yeah i got to write some divine world building and world settings with paizo which is honestly a big reason why i'm able to rules lawyer <laughs> the way i do i read i read the books <laughs> cover to cover i had to go to like even went through pathfinder first edition as well which is Oh boy. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was been a family announced. I got I wrote with a, I wrote a bunch of different things with a bunch of different people. There's a ton of awesome writers involved in that project. Keep an eye out on that. Um but yeah. Let's go. Be, I'm very excited for it to come out. It was, it was, it was very fun. We're so proud of you. 
and if you want to see Drac and let them know how awesome they are for both that announcement and for basically everything they do, uh, you should come to MCM Comic Con in London next Saturday on the 28th. Drac and myself will be on the panel of UK Rising Stars in the TTRPG industry. It is hosted by Dicebreaker. Uh, it is going to be hosted by Liz Kennedy. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be playing sexy battle wizards. And yeah. I can't wait. It's uh, uh, gonna be a lot of fun my only complaint oh. is that the fact that there are the only people that uh consider you rising stars is that convention we've everybody <laughs> else has already known they uh, they're they're looking in the I, past I, what I was this three years ago what well, a couple of years ago, I remember uh, Riz Ahmed being nominated, and I think winning the uh, BAFTA for The Rising Star, and he was like, yeah, I've been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, I don't know about for Ed, but for me, I feel like I'm definitely rising in the UK space, because very quickly, I, I'll be honest, I abandoned the UK space. I was like, I want to be streaming at US time, where no one in the UK is going to be realistically watching. Um, so I guess it makes sense for me. Ed, on the other hand, you've been doing this. I feel like you've been creating like this UK-based content for a while. Um, Ish, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> We've been US for a while too, because yeah. of uh, well, was it back in 2020 or 2021, yeah. where you yeah, started yeah. jamming for for me. Yeah, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Another thing I'm doing that I definitely want to shout out. Um, I'm I, once again over on my first dungeon in a Orbital Blues camp uh, mini series. Oh, yeah. uh, I think Cowboy Bebop Space Western. Uh, it's going to be a five episode series every Tuesday. Episode zero, um, session zero, the creator interview, and episode one are all out right now. So if you want to hear our very sad, very space. Cowboys. Um, <laughs> check that out on my first dungeon. Um, and I, let, let me know how much you enjoy Blank, because I think my character Blank is probably the, the strange character. The most whimsical character I've played in a while. Um, but who knows how long that will last? Or if they if they even last, you need to tune in to find out. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, my first dungeon, Orbiter Blues. Who's up next? Give me a second. Okay. Me. Um, I will be at TwitchCon and doing a billion panels. So for if y'all are going to be there, um, make sure you check out your TwitchCon app and you can search Sam and find all the panels. I have one every day. I also have an official TwitchCon meet and greet alongside Cheebs on Friday at 2.30 p.m. Reservations are all already full. However, you can catch me anywhere else. Um, but I do work for Wonder Warrior Project, so I'll most likely be in the charity zone at our booth. And we have stuff to give away, so come say hello. Uh, and then on Tuesdays, if y'all do not yet know that our incredible Edward Spence over here GMs for our charity TTRPG called Eden Falls, we have reached <laughs> now six episodes, which means out of our season two of eight episodes, next Tuesday will be our penultimate. And everything is just setting up very nicely for some absolute gremlin moments. Well, at least for my character but I'll pull everybody in, so it's fine. <laughs> Works out every time. <laughs> so that's Tuesdays at 1 p.m. PT or 4 p.m. Eastern or 9 p.m. GMT if you're Edward. Over on Twitch.tv slash Wounded Warrior Project where donations affect our games live. However, if you want to catch up, you can catch up on the video collections over there or on my personal YouTube channel um, for the more edited down versions without all the silly little chatter. But that's all that I think I have. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm, you know, one of these days I'm going to have announcements that I can actually talk about because <laughs> I'm, I'm in that weird place of like every week I see everybody doing cool shit and talking about it and whatnot. And I'm sitting here being like, one day I will be able to say the thing, <laughs> but today is not that day. <laughs> but isn't there something lovely about being able to say I have something, but I just can't talk about it at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think that's fun. I love being like, I have a thing about NDA. Sorry. I love saying that. <laughs> Coming from Drac, who's been redacted for two years. <laughs> it has uh, been redacted. Uh, oh. uh, uh, Lisa takes here. 100 points of psychic damage. Nice. <sighs> That's the sort of damage that <laughs> Callisto Thursday, usually puts no out, right? <laughs> I mean, at this level, I think close, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Those are the ones that are going to kill me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else with news? I mean, I guess it's kind of news for people here in the UK, but I'm also going to be at Dragon Meets, which is another TJRPG convention uh, in, in the UK. Um, I might be on a panel, who knows, honestly. We're in the weird organizing in-between stage, but at the very least, I'm going to be at the con. So if you want to meet me there, I'll be there as well. And I think that's happening in, in December. I think early December, I think like 2nd of December. Dragon meat with two E's, uh, an A in there yes. could take you somewhere drastically that's, different. Yes. I mean, I will be at Dragon Meat as well, but that's a different con. That's a different thing. <laughs> we're, we're, we're catching the same plane for that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Lovely. <laughs> uh, so I just want to I just want to talk to you about the whole the film recording then as well the whole video. I, I rented out the cameras. It's all set. Nice, amazing. Yeah, yeah I have the um. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the wrong streaming site for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's all very bad. It's uh, it's a bad dragon meat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I was almost uh, I was almost procured for I uh, one of those streams before. I was in the <laughs> really. Uh, yeah, oh. I was I was offered. It was very early, early in my D and I was offered a uh, 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 paid. A paid DM for one of those uh, one of those sites, <laughs> and I was like, wow, you know okay. what? I hey, can't I turn mean, down I'd, a gig, I'd but unlock uh, it, yeah, yeah. But I never so, got. To, it was so sad. It 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 it, it fell apart because who knows? <laughs> who knows? I only, <laughs> I only chuckled because I thought you were going to go ahead and say it was early in my, it, the whole thing of like it was early in my career. I was young. I was in college. <laughs> I <needed> the money. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I was fully, I was fully ready for the meme. But no. They, that's no, uh, you're serious. They, that's what they think uh, here at the co-working space because I have a curtain over the door, and uh, <laughs> really, That'll it's to it. keep the sunlight out and to keep my room cool. And there is one person that is sitting right adjacent from me, so when I look at my side monitor. We make creepy eye contact, and I couldn't keep doing that over and over again because it's like we both realize that someone's looking over our shoulder. And I'm like, I can't yeah. do that anymore. That's <laughs> this. You're distracting me. <laughs> uh, but yes, TwitchCon uh, take off tomorrow, and I'll be all over the place. I won't be on the floor, but I'll be out and about in all the spots. So if you see me, I guarantee you a high five. What's up? to pick up where we left off a week ago coming back together in the amber forge settling back in as a party free from destruction of the floating massive recycling center in the sky lufia pulled off no less than a miracle and at least temporary solving Callisto's hot magma problem. Now ensuing a combination of the elements inside of him, able to release steam off at will, but no longer becoming a threat to himself or others. You guys prepared a literal feast, got to enjoy the creature comforts of their family domicile that the Amber Forge has become. After finally getting a rest from your heroics and making sure that no one in Stormforge was injured from the falling recycling center, you guys have set off in its direction to go and investigate 
as wardens. But you guys have shown up just a tad bit late. Your long rest stealing that chance from you to investigate it while it was on the ground. You guys have now headed with a recycling center in the sky. Still to the spot where it landed to see what information you can glean. We pick back up a couple miles out. Still on your way to the site. Now the recycle center almost too small to see in the sky as it has drifted around and now heading back behind Stormforge proper. So before we started walking and as it started to move away, I seem to remember at the end of the last episode, Mishkin summoned another shadow spy from the ground and it is currently flying after the recycling plant i won't be able to do anything with that until my shadow spy and i are reunited but yeah it's flying after it into the distance as a raven just ah, yes your raven is currently perched on the side cool mishkin otherwise hangs back behind Callisto and Lelufia as wardens. Uh, and you have a uh, crisp on on your side as well. <laughs> I'm getting Morse code of a uh, static through your <laughs> microphone at the moment. Is that any? Oh, say something. Hello. Hello. Yes, that has fixed it. Flavor. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, Callisto is just walking ahead, um, just trying to just heading to the site of the landing landing spot where uh, the recycling plant landed. Is keeping an eye out for anyone who seems to be moving away from it, um, in case someone's trying to I don't know escape or leave without being noticed. But for the most part, just heading towards the landing site. Hey, let's go ahead and throw out a perception check. Thirty-seven. Ooh. Thirty-seven. I'm be very choice about my words. There is a certain stillness for this area. For this time in the afternoon, there should be much, much more travel. And for an incident of this size, for something to have literally landed in Stormforge where it shouldn't be, there should be far more watchers. But you notice between the shops and the different apartments that that just isn't going on. It largely looks as if part of Stormforge is shutting down for holiday where things begin to wrap up early and folks are scurrying back to their own domiciles. There are more people leaving the scene that are going to the scene. Mm, okay. In particular, you see a heavy presence of sky marshals hovering, probably spaced about a hundred yards apiece. They're are they 
There has flying been flying or like on the ground. No, they are hovering. They are flying. Hovering, literally hovering. Okay. It appears that there has at least been city guard that has gone through and locked this area down to multiple levels. So it would definitely tell you that not many individuals got anywhere near this recycle center. And the ones that did would have been first on the scene. I think um, my pendant would glow and in, in response, Lulufia's would as well, as I just tell, point this out to her saying, there aren't as many onlookers as I expected. A spectacle like this, I think some people would be hanging around to watch, but it seems more like people being driven away, like this place has been locked down. Am I seeing this too, Robert? With him pointing it out? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess it's a good thing we're heading in that direction then. Do you have any suspicions? No, I just think it's odd. It's strange that they yeah. thought it was necessary to lock it down, but still let the plants leave. If I was going to lock it down, I'd lock everything down. Just keep your eyes peeled. Well do. About a mile away, you can see the visual barricade of the city guard. There are both cavalry and foot soldiers, as well as several construct barricades. Of Do these... we notice the guy we met? Oh, sorry. No, no, no. That's okay. The cavalier guy? Do we notice? You're a mile out, there? so you're you're uh you, you don't know if that's if Owen is up there or not yet. Okay. Case okay, so I so you said there are marshals hovering in the distance as well? Yes, there are also sky marshals up above. So once we're close enough, I want to see if any of them carry any kind of numbering or identification, specifically looking for Agent 17. I don't believe you're going to be able to read their badge number or identification from as far away as you are. Oh, sorry, I mean when we get close enough, or are they too high up? They're too high up oh, while you guys okay. walk on the street to see any kind of identification. They don't normally wear an open number. You guys have heard them reference each other because they don't go by name, they only go by a number with inside the organization. So it would be getting to their their own badge or hearing their communications. Okay. Within the line of foot soldiers, are there any of the juggernauts? Uh, no, there are no juggernauts inside of the city guard. Only to know. Only Cavaliers and when two distinct different orders. Think uh think of city, county, and uh highway patrol in the United States. The highway patrol has carte blanche basically over the state versus the city uh, uh a city beat is contained within that municipality and does not technically have jurisdiction outside of it. It's the feds. Always, <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> no, the most powerful thing in the United States is a game warden. They can just walk in your house. 
so could I. <laughs> just making in trouble. Yep, they can just walk in your house and go straight to the freezer. Huh? <laughs> That's... Okay, yeah. Game warden as opposed to soldier. Does Fourth Amendment count though? Oh, gosh, maybe not. <laughs> game wardens are wild, man. There's some. There's some stories in. <laughs> Some what you're stories. saying here is that as a warden, Callisto and Lolly have the real power, right? Don't you check my my chest freezer? I ain't got no out of I ain't got no out of season squirrels in there. Oh my god! What's this head doing in here? <laughs> you got a license for that carapace? Oh my god! By the way, I'm enthralled by calling all insects a carapace now. It's, Whatever. <laughs> the critter's so much more fun. <laughs> Anything else as you guys approach this first line of tape? Um, as we're walking towards them, um, I will turn to the rest of the group and just say, we're going to have to talk to them to let us in, so initially, probably let Lelufia and I do the talking. Because we won't need to do much, just flash our badge and then walk in. Awesome. Or if you say so. If you are asked a question, just say you've been... Actually, before I say this, Robert, is there like an equivalent of being like deputized <laughs> amongst the wardens? <laughs> yeah, uh, they they would be, uh, you know, they, you don't actually have to put the, the, the star on us and call us Officer Doofy, uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would be uh, as if you were bringing like a forensic scientist along or a, uh, they, they you would you would refer to them as you have some sort of expert in a field that you uh, that's with you. They would be they would be a part of your party, but they would definitely need to to hold close and not wander too far. Okay. But yes, your uh, your your status should check out. Yeah. So if you are ask question, just say you're some um, experts in the field that we're using, specifically in this case, I suppose, the use of magical, magical items. Just uh, Kaiva is going to give you a little nod. He's going to pull out the book and uh, open to a page. And it's almost like things suddenly start going a little bit on autopilot. One hand is off the Vox now and another is sort of gently scribing over the page. There is not writing going on there so much as there is impression. It's not even pictures being drawn, but there's definitely something being transferred there. As I'm going to go ahead and use the book to cast... This is going to be very much more of an RP thing, but I'm going to cast Transcribe Conflict. This is totally just a RP use of things, but basically for the next hour I'm recording stuff. I can use a recall knowledge check to sort of give me more insight about things, particularly about any battle that went down, but RP-wise, let's use it as a way of saying Kaivar is head on the swivel for everything. Ah, uh, this is very cool. So I will let you kind of use this in an investigator fashion. Uh, you're you're going to be able to go in where you know a, a particular conflict was. You're going to be able to look for claw marks, look for the different disturbances. Of was there munitions used? Was there magic used? Does it look like this battle was more martial? Uh, very cool. Question, are there people near us that are working on the situation of this, um, or like the investigation that they're doing? Or is there nobody investigating? You guys are two miles out from the scene where it landed. You're currently approaching the one mile marker right now. You guys are relatively by yourselves walking towards as 
anyone else is being flushed from this scene and being sent back to their home still. It is very much like a uh, a construction zone of only uh, only need traffic. Is the construction similar in nature to that Lelufia and I were investigating before we were kidnapped? Still too far from the actual site to see it as you guys approach that first barricade and the cavalry that is there a couple of gentlemen that you don't recognize point their pikes down and hold the line who goes there do they know who we are? Since Don't have Ellen... a clue who you are. Sick. Uh, Callisto, I'm one of the wardens, and I'll flash my badge. We need to investigate the landing or crash or whatever you want to call it, site that happened not too long ago. You're a bit late. <sighs> Yes, no, there was a bit of paperwork and debriefing I had to do with last mission, so it took a bit of a while before we could actually get started on this one. Just want to see if there's anything left behind. I saw that the recycling plant took off already, but just in case. Diplomacy with advantage. Diplomacy. Oh, my diplomacy is juicy. Um... Nearly on the net 20. 33. Oh. No problem. They part and open up ways. It's the city guard lets you in with a relative ease. Just to let you know, they're going to be shutting the whole site down about the next two hours. Who is they? Stormforge. Well, there's somebody in control. <laughs> Far above my pay grade. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh. Yeah. Is about to say what? something and then brushes it off. Is something wrong? Is it something we should know before heading in? Really, there's just not a lot there. Hmm. I, I'm not an investigator. I, I, it's not what I do, but it's like this thing was set down on a pillow. Good luck trying to find things. It's good luck. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. And that line forms back behind you. Now in between the crash site and the front line. This is a very surreal experience because it is just cobblestone for the next mile. And you and the party walking in a line by yourselves kind of that golden hour setting in in the afternoon and it's just you walking up to this taped off site it feels like you could hear a pin drop out here the streets have never been this empty even on the strongest of holidays As you guys make your way to the site proper, it is roped off in all directions. Large red rope 
all the way around. The perfect spot if you were to land a large floating recycling center. Part of a larger promenade right in between any other public constructs, not even a single twig or branch from green space has been broken. You wouldn't even know what landed here if it weren't for the actual red rope that ties this space. The first thing that you notice is all of the dust and leaves and anything that was inside this square has been blown and swept back. It almost looks like an artificial crater that's there from that settlement. There's mild indentation from the pressure that has been placed on this cobblestone and brick. There are several Sky Wardens that are floating still up above a handful of them that are on the ground. There look like there are two individuals in academic gear still investigating inside the scene itself. As we're walking forward, Mishkin is purple scar over it. Just leans in to Lelufia. Just whispers. Is this sort of presence with city guard and sky marshal's usual? Mm, not so much in um activity during daytime at least. So it's a little different. It just steps back. Well, and she turns to the group. What do you all want to look for? Well, most of my expertise is in the arc. Do not leave. The silent gear have left trace of themselves. I will be of much use in that regard. But I can assist. In whichever way you both you need me to I can speak to the ones investigating already and see what they know off the bat Let's see if that would be a good building block to build off of but I think ultimately we're trying to look into less of what happened since we are fully aware of what happened but more of who is involved and how Richard. yeah Yes. See if you can get a sense of the magic in this area. Whether this thing was able to propel itself back up or whether it took arcane means. Funnily enough, I read my mind. And Mishkin is just very subtle casting arcane sense. His hands glowing beneath the brown robe that covers his torso as he just moves his hands up and he is able to cast magic Nates. go ahead uh, and make a stealth check or a thievery check your choice um the same I've not used thievery for one there. 
Let's see here. Let's go ahead and see what the general perception is. Where be my sky marshals? They have disappeared. No. Ah, uh, yes, okay. good. I got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lufia. High five. <laughs> Certainly didn't like those guys. <laughs> Silly sniper rifles. <laughs> oh, nice. love to see it. It's like it was undetected. So, you were casting? Uh, so detect magic. There is a strong arcane residual presence that is still here and one that will probably remain for the next couple of hours out of it is it at all similar to that that was felt after our first encounter with the sky marshals and first with the voshball There isn't a, when it comes to divining an arcane energy, it is not a school of magic to where you could be like, I feel there was some necromancy here. It's not that. It's just an imprint of the physical energy that it took to lift this thing up into the air. Michigan it lends you turn. to believe that it is not mechanically solvent. Even though you saw the propellers in the distance, don't think that that machine is actually working and that it is more magic than machine right now. Tever lifted this thing away. I doubt it was our silent gear, friends. There's Why an do you arcane. See that? There's something arcane hanging in the air. It is evasive, strong, likely here for some time. Interesting. Yes. I will continue investigating. Meshkin just continues to move around the perimeter. Is there one area where it's clear that the arcane um, residue is stronger than the rest of it, or is it just permeated throughout? It is permeated throughout the entire square. Okay. Uh, this is flying a little by the seat of my pants. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw out a feat here, which is slightly reflavored from its original text, but it's read psychometric resonance. Essentially, what I'm doing is something very similar, which is casting detect magic, functionally speaking. Um, but slowly you will start to see Kaivar looking not so much through the magical energy, but through the emotional and psychic resonance that might be around, there is something very clearly that he's looking for, which is an eddy in any remaining emotion. The landing of the factory is clearly going to be something that has elicited a great degree of relief. A great thing like that falling to earth and not hitting anybody or killing anyone is going to create that kind of residue that also creates this canvas against which anything else might stand out in particular if there's some kind of immediate strife or some kind of anxiety 
something that maybe would be in the mind of someone trying to lift this thing off with magic. This it's feat kind is insane. Is. This is so good. I don't know of a D&D equivalent of this at all. This is fantastic. I have to I have to find it basically, right? So like Kaivar is very overtly placing his hands on like every one of the coffle stones and he's not hiding this at all. It's kind of going off the fact that he is weird buggy boy to get away with this and it's like the warden's brought in a weird tool, you know, like he's he's just doing his thing, just 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 let the expert find it. But he's looking Don't for mind some him, kind he's of a little emotional. strange. <laughs> yeah. uh, so far no <laughs> one has questioned you since you've come in from the city line. Uh whatever they're looking for the warden's party that you are hasn't uh attracted significant attention yet. Okay. Go ahead and roll spell attack, Kaivar, with advantage. Okay. Uh, whatever that is, reduce it by one. I have inspire courage on there in error. Twenty three. Anxiety. Being rushed. Frantic. Whoever aided in this arcane expulsion was very, very concerned by the timeliness. There is a sense of panic that fills this magic. Very, very rushed spell casting. And moreover so, very innate magic. Whatever Entity, team, or conglomeration has used their own internal ability. Anything on this scale that would have required tomes and wizardry would have taken far longer ritualistically. Is there one spot in particular where this is more prevalent than another? Evenly distributed. But that doesn't shock you for the size of this object that has been moved. I'm going to go ahead and do my best to sort of subtly communicate that in a second, but checking around in the areas where this resonance is coming up, are there any leftover objects? In particular, is there any sign of direct struggle? Blood on the cobblestones, maybe someone's been clocked in the face in an altercation. Perception maybe check. somebody. Okay. I need... Mm, nope, that does not have it on there. Okay, cool. Garbage rolls today. No traces of struggle here. Okay. Simple indentation. The dust is moved. As said before, the strongest is that lingering magic that's still there from whatever happened on this site. Callisto. I think I'm going to... Oh. Lolly. Okay, sorry. What are you all doing? on the scene. So I actually would like to read the air and look around at everybody who's 
investigating, who's just sitting there, those maybe on a break, but in regards to anything that could help us um, know where to look or what to look at or see if anybody looks at us with trepidation or what they're doing, um, may it seem a bit more like they're trying to hide anything or if they're more open, but yeah. Go ahead and roll a perception check. And give yourself a plus one bonus. Of course. <laughs> I take the blame for that. I take the blame for that. I did say that it sounds a safe bet. Like at the beginning of the session. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How dare you let your husband point, put that but... juju on you? <laughs> it's every okay. miracle a mistake. <laughs> I walk so he can run. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bus trying to get a reaction off of the Sky Marshals since they're set back and stoic in their own armor. And the only real people at the site are are these two academics that are older in nature and seem to just be utterly perplexed by what has happened here in the first place. They seem very confused. And I get sand in my eye. <laughs> oh, God, God. Still <laughs> windy in Stormforge. <laughs> I think Callisto would be taking the, the social approach and would and they're gonna approach the two um, academics who seem to look perplexed from the way you described it <coughs> and then, um, approach them uh, yes uh, young man uh. yes um, I'm um, Warden Callisto I'm here to help with the investigation just wanted to ask really quickly what have you figured out so far I <laughs> Could we have a warden on the scene here? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I just don't know how this thing landed so smoothly. Hmm. I mean, what kind of pilot could have landed? Such a massive airship in the middle of the night. Unimpeded yes, no, by yeah. anything else. Uh, it's just it's as minimal of damage as it possibly could have happened, and it makes no sense. Yes, no, I got given the basic rundown of the situation, and I was hoping there'd be a bit more to it, but if that's it, I see why it's confusing. Um, and the, uh, claiming it wasn't uh, some, some sort of uh, uh, fail safe uh, uh, night watchman that's landed this. They, they, they claim that these things are highly autonomous and they've touted the machines behind them. Yet they've claimed that there was a certain amount of failure here and someone incredibly talented was able to pull this off. They haven't given us a name, though. I don't know if they'll be celebrating in the news tomorrow this particular hero, but... This all seems very strange to me. Uh, if I were to tell you, I don't think... There's a night watchman on there at all. I think there's a highly sophisticated antiquarium has probably guided it to a specific spot. I would put my faith in a machine, but old man, a situation wants you this any day of the week. This is far more particular. How would they have ever known that this would be the exact right spot? That's silly talk. And it Divination. This was calculated. 
<laughs> Has Poor anyone man. suggested it was divination? <laughs> of course not. I'm merely implying they would almost take divination in the hands of any talented pilot who have picked this spot out and landed it here in an emergency situation. <laughs> I believe they have smaller machines and they're letting everyone else know. I would usually be one to agree with you, but looking at the minimal damage, I think especially considering the bear crater, if you can even really call it that, that it left behind, I think, I don't think there are any machines that, at least publicly known, with that kind of exactly. dexterity. Publicly known, it's... There are... All sorts of machines in Swarmford that are range from public to highly classified. Okay, above. So this is Jack asking: Would um, something like the recycling plant having um, machinery that isn't publicly available would that be a thing that's likely and allowed? Uh, say that again. Sorry, my brain did not process. Oh no, you're good. Um, so like, would would there's something like the recycling plants, or whatever company owns the recycling plants, having um machines with that level of um articulation and dexterity, I suppose is the best best way I can put it. Would that be allowed to be had without that a public knowing, without some kind of higher power in the city being aware? Innovation is simply encouraged on all fronts. I, the fact that it is a recycling plant doesn't disallow it from having the finest machinery that their company can provide. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I suppose it's coming from a place where I'm more used to sharing any innovations we come across. But I definitely, I understand why some might keep it secret. Um, After all, this well, is the Evan Wynn Corporation. They spare no expense. They have a 100% track record. No crashes. No mechanical failures. And now this act of heroism from apparently the best trained pilot, the side of Stormford. Do you, who was it that told you all of this? That it was a, one of their pilots that landed it? Is there anyone we can speak to about this? Because I would love to get a name. They, at the very least, deserve to be celebrated to some extent. <sighs> Unfortunately, this was the briefing that I received from the Sky Marshals when we got on the scene about 45 minutes ago. Okay. Um, which of the Sky it Marshals told the... you that I can chat with them? Official report. Uh... Let's see if he's still around. What is... Uh... Where is he? Number 53. I, I can't ever tell. If you find 53, he's the one who was in charge. He was in front of the zone. Uh, you, you can tell... Uh, uh, khakis have a very defined crease around the cuff and the boots. I'm sure to let them know that you... Point to me in their, their direction. Thank you. If you find anything, please do let me know and I'll keep you updated if we find anything either. Well, I appreciate that. My name is Gallen. Gallen. Pleasure to meet you. And and you? And I'll turn to the other the other academic. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm just a friend of a friend. I happen to be enjoying a, a, a drink over here at my uh, friend's office. Drug along for some adventure. But uh, I do appreciate you uh, considering me. My name is Levi. Huh? Levi, a pleasure to meet you. If you are 
see any of these uh, taverns open up that are around the side. Uh, if they begin serving again, if you could, <laughs> it would be uh, uh, it would be uh, most devious if you could point me in that direction. It's been dry on this adventure for some time. Yes, no, I would definitely make sure to keep you posted on if any open up again. But with how intense this lockdown has been, it might not be for a while. So probably pace yourself for what you have. <sighs> it's exactly what I didn't want to hear. <laughs> uh, Levi, come, come. We have more investigation to do here, even if it doesn't look like it. There could be something sticking out more than meets the eye. I'll leave you two to it. Question. Could Lolly have been, not in the conversation, obviously, but hanging back and watching this interaction? Yeah. Because I would like to use my uh, new feet. Well, one of my new feats. Ooh. My biographical eye. Wait, what? <laughs> it's a lot to read. I, uh, Captain. One minute in the presence of someone you haven't met before and haven't met since you gained this. You gain a one... Uh, you attempt a society check. You get a plus one. Oh, okay, cool. go for it. Love it. Yeah, it's uh, very Sherlock. <laughs> it's like uh, it, it, advanced insight. I like it. Go ahead and roll uh, yeah. society plus one. Look at us doing our investigating in every different way. Love it. Uh, well. I don't know why that's private, but I can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> what did I roll? Drum roll, please. That's wild that, Another it, one. that it conceals it from all of you and it like highlights in a crazy color. Ooh. Ah, Aww. of course. Or... At least it's not a one. Yeah. Oh, God. More dust in the <laughs> eyes. Uh, <laughs> uh, your impression of the academics isn't impressed. It's definitely at this hour, the C squad that has been sent out on uh, that tier of academia, especially with the other professor's friend just looking to cop a buzz. You don't think they're going to be at this site for very much longer. Okay. However, you are impressed with the amount of information that was willingly given in such a short amount of time. My husband has that charm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Agent 53, does that sound familiar? Or is that just a, is that a new um, idea to me? I haven't met an Agent 53 yet, have I? I'll be dead honest. I pulled the numbers out of thin air, and if it happens to match, <laughs> then it okay. it happens. Uh, yes. So I don't know. Killed killed Michigan. To the best. Just kidding. To the best of my knowledge, uh, we have only met Agent One Seventy Eight. Yeah. Ooh, Fifty Three's got some seniority. Mm. Just like I planned it. <laughs> Um, There's a really I, good chance of me saying the same number, though. Very. <laughs> to keep note of them now, just to make sure so can, we can use it to our advantage. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave these two academics because uh, I think upon speaking to them, I immediately could tell that they weren't helpful. <laughs> they weren't going to be helpful at, at all. Um, but I'm going to look for this Agent 53. Um, and I think since you just said some kind of seniority, I want to look for what whoever looks like the most. Um, I don't want to say senior, <laughs> the most powerful, uh, the highest in the command of the uh, Sky Marshals, right? And he, they did give you the clue of him having the uh, perfectly creased and cuffed khakis. So I'm going to go let you Ooh, roll a yeah. perception check. It's going to be a DC 26. Can I also help? I'm trying to get not a failure. <laughs> you bet. I would update Lodufia. You'll be the advantage. I have this. 
Oh my goodness. Look at all these feet. Hell yeah. Another oh. thing that I hope I can use. <laughs> I'm so proud of you guys for pulling out your feet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How does this help me? Uh, uh, I'm letting uh, Lolly roll advantage on it behind you. Okay. So I rolled with advantage or. No, you guys both roll singly. Uh, she's going to be the advantage. What you roll are we doing? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, perception. Twenty seven. Oh, that. that. Twenty six. Uh, how is Lolly in soul combat all of a sudden? Because wrong perception. <laughs> well, here you go. She's fighting everybody. You, how did Where you, is he? Oh, you yeah, rolled your initiative. Violence. You rolled yeah, your initiative. For, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you guys both point out. Look at those khakis. <laughs> you know, khakis and she's having a day. Khakis aren't in anymore, but you know, <laughs> there's a DC 26, right? Or am I getting that wrong? Uh, I don't know. I actually can't remember. Yeah. DC 26. You guys have both succeeded. You, you guys literally sick. on the dot. Okay. Nice. I've been able to look up and find the warden that you're looking for. I'll turn to Lilith and say, do we both want to take this or should I? Uh, I will go with you. Would you handle the talking? Gladly. Unless you need me to, let me know. Or day. Um, and Clis and Luthia will approach Mr. Khakis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As you approach, they have just shut down their air pack and have settled back down. And you can see the decoration medals on the side of that brown bomber jacket. As they kind of turn in, coincide with you walking forward. I nod in that direction. Hi, we're with the Wardens and Callisto, and I'll put a hand out. Roll a diplomacy check. And Lolly, you, you can do one, one as the advantage roll as well. Twenty nine. Twenty nine, thirty one. Let's go. And I'm Lelufia. Extends a hand, firm handshake. You were given a fifty three. Perfect. But they yes. remove their helmet. Oh. As it is. And it's Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, guys. Don't tell anybody I'm here. <laughs> it is a olive skin, dark brown hair, about mid 30s, human. But you can call me Devries. Pleasure. What? Pleasure's all ours. Um, we're here to help with the investigation. We're sent in, given a very brief briefing of what exactly happened, but we figured we'd go to whoever has been here the longest. We might have most information. What happened? We arrived in the first hour or so that the plant miraculously landed here I'll be dead honest with you we stayed away from those cannons as long as we could there's four of them on top of it 
I don't understand why a recycling center needs four arcane cannons on it. Hmm. But it appeared to be malfunctioning. Get it landed in, in such a perfect place. We don't know whether it was internal systems or if it's this claim of this heroic pilot that everyone has heard. That was what I was told when I arrived. There were Don't already you? council here. You don't seem to believe it, if I'm interpreting that right. I don't know what happened here, wardens. Who is this council you speak of that was here? Entire Ward 8, apparently, was convened this morning. Is that familiar Not far to from me, here. Krista? Yeah, there are different wards inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, do we know them? No, you wouldn't know. It wouldn't be something where it's like, I know the councilman on this ward of this particular area. You would just understand the system. There okay. are a lot of wards and uh, individuals here. These These are... More of the low hanging fruit of the bureaucracy. Conveniently, Ward 8 was here. On the scene first. So we're getting a lot of information from purely the academics. Okay. What information do you believe? Doesn't matter what I believe. It does. Warden? No, it doesn't. I'm here to Why? secure this site to make sure that a due process and investigation can go through. It is for investigators like yourselves to come to these conclusions. I'm not trained, nor do I understand all the methods to ascertain exactly what happened here. Is there anybody from Ward 8 still here? Long gone. I would you know love to went. have talked to one of them myself. Yeah. Besides them reconvening at the next council meeting? Yeah. Probably the best way. I have Would no I idea the when they ones? meet next. Okay. I'm sure you'll be able to find all their names easily. It's all public knowledge. Yes, no, we can definitely look into that. Thank you. That's honestly quite helpful. We're hearing the briefing of a some talented pilot but we didn't know who it was coming from so this at least puts a face or a name to the source of information they're the only ones that stepped foot apparently on the craft i didn't see it myself as i said i didn't want to put any of my patrol under any unnecessary duress without knowing what was going to happen with those cannons. They seemed less worried than the rest of us. Hmm. That doesn't concern anybody. It's not weird. Those are for the investigators to sort. We're here to lock down the perimeter so you can do your job. You answering my questions helps me do my job. I don't think that you understand that.
what I'm doing here is not what you're doing here. I'm very I'm aware of that. Trying to help you do your job. I would like to ask one question that I think you might have some experience in. I haven't had to deal with many lockdowns of areas like this, but I, I assume you have maybe in the past. Is it normal for the cause of the lockdown to be let go? And I gesture to the flying recycling plant, but have the location itself remain locked down? I honestly think that they're entirely surprised that there is not damage or casualties here. I expect this scene to be wrapped up before nightfall. Mm. I Never think happened. I am glad it happened. The less casualties, the better. Absolutely. It's. Rather spectacular. Whatever led this to me, there's no doubt. When they ordered the perimeter, I expected to see a much more grim scene. I'll be honest. This all seems a bit overkill now. It's better overkill than a regret later on. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I don't think I have any other questions, uh, Lulufia. No, nope, I'm good. Thank you. The only other thing to note is there were a small troop of the Vosh Borg that were here, but they did not get past our line as there were no casualties to inspect. Where did they go? No idea. They just weren't getting through our tape. There's nothing for them to do here. Thank you for the information. And that's Appreciate. not out of order. They are disgustingly prompt during emergencies. Yes. I'll, I'll be honest. They still give me the... They give me the freaks. So I'm quite glad they're not sticking around. Um, and I... No, I said I had one last question, but this one will be the last. Were you around for when the recycling plant took off again? I was, but we were sent back at a distance. About the mile marker where the city guard is. Why would they ask you to stand back? Like, having sky marshals nearby would be useful, even in a takeoff. <sighs> We were warned of possibilities of failure. Who asked you to stand back? Council Authority. Where are they now? <laughs> I regret to inform you all that I do not know the comings and goings of every individual in Stormforge. I understand. Never hurts to ask, though. They didn't want to risk any other casualties, so they cleared the zone. Oh, that makes sense, honestly. Keep that number at zero. We're going to continue looking around. Um, but thank you so much for asking, answering our questions and giving a bit more insight on what we're dealing with. If you do run into any information, please do let me know. Um, again, like I said, I'm Warden Callisto. This is Warden Lulufia, so you can 
directly ask us for us at the Warden's Lodge. They should know how to get to us. Um, and we'll keep you, if you would like to be, updated on what we find as well. You all seem like good chaps. Thank you. He hands a card over. I, I'll take it. I quickly scan it and then pocket it. If there's a scrying or sending stone, you can get a hold of me. Hold it. Thank you. If you need anything from us in the sky, let me know. Thank you very much. And Lelufia turns away. I'm assuming Kluser probably does too, but yeah. where's Michigan? Still walking around the perimeter, very much keeping his face out of view of all of the marshal and city guard presence, but just seeing if he can get a handle on anything else about this arcane sense that he's picked up. Uh, Lelufia would try to catch eyes with you, and if she's successful, <laughs> you would be. she would just kind of nod her head like, hey, come here. And is Kalisa still with me? Yep. Cool. Yeah. And if Mishkin gets that, are you approaching or what? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, she would get in close to Whisper. Um, but, well, I'll let you know that we have learned that the Vashborg were here just before the recycling center took off. Hardly surprising. That's what I was thinking. Do we have any other leads at all? Not entirely. But yep. there is another ward, Ward 8, that was also here. Don't know where they are now. But they had some involvement. And they didn't seem surprised by a lot that was going on. So mm, as if I missed anything, Kalisto, please feel free to fill them in. Yes, no, um, it seems that, uh, I didn't catch his name. Um, what was the name of the company that owns the recycling plant? Was it like Ed, Ed Evan Wind. or something like that? E Evan Wind, okay. Evan Wind. Um, oh, sorry, say that again. Evan Wind? <laughs> Evan Wind. Evan Wind. Um, it seems Evan Wind, the owner of the recycling plant, the company who runs it, gave the story that a skilled pilot had landed the recycling plant so safely and so delicately. Um, and so we are all aware that's very much a lie, so there is some kind of cover-up ha happening here. And the fact that they haven't outright called out who or what had did it, it seems like they don't want people in the business too much. Very well. I have a suggestion, if I might broach it. Well, we should get our other allies then. Where are Farouk and uh, Kaibar? Uh, in all the while as this has been going on, may I make a request that Kaiva, while everyone else was talking, was uh, attempting to get Farouk to help him in the search for uh, signs of a fight. Signs of battle, signs of any kind of conflict around the square. I just placed all those names and who they are inside the Discord for your notes. Perfect, thank you. Nice. Kaivar, I see no signs of struggle here. Uh... It was here and gone. But the magic is... presence that you speak of, it lingers like a mist over this entire area. Uh, yes, yes, Farouk. This, this is why we, we must look. Yes, yes. I'm above table. Kaivar is going on a limb here. If there is anything that can be spotted at all, he's going to look for it. Because... A uh, ghostly tragedy exists. And even if it was a moment of, say, one 
the person who is involved in the magic of this slapping another across the face and sitting there and absconding them for this going wrong, it's something which might be able to get picked up on. Reggie, you it's, it's a, it, Reggie, it's a use your magic shots. stronger, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if we get Reggie in this campaign, we're set. Oh my god, another Reggie? Oh Bring him back. <laughs> 25 uh, swings yeah, with smite and barbaric rage. Mm-hmm. I will, uh, I will, I will take those swings at advantage, please. But yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very much a search and it's very much a push, but that's, that's the lead that Kaivar is looking through. So if there is anything, he's going to try and pick up on it, but who knows if there is anything. Go ahead and roll your spell attack. Okay. Uh, whilst doing this, because I have the book out, I'm also going to use communal knowledge here. Aha, all the feats. It's not necessarily something that applies because it's supposed to apply to a skill check, but it would be a plus two circumstance roll as I'm basically trying to read everything. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can glean. Thirty four, as you try to trace the fabric of the resonance that is left back behind. You feel exhaustion. Emptiness. Cold. A spark go from a flame to barely a candle flicker. The energy that was expunged here was incredibly draining. Yeah, rereading the Rereading the description of ghostly tragedy, this might count. I'm going to throw this out there and then this is a yes or no, but uh, essentially it is uh, a reenactment of nine minutes leading up to death or injury. Um, essentially with all of the psychic damage of it pushing back onto me when the process is complete, but it would give us an insight. However, it specifies Dude, these feats are crazy. This isn't a feat. This is the spell. I used this before, <laughs> but we've used it differently. This is this is like the intended OG yeah. use. The stipulation is that it's it says victim very specifically. So if this was a group effort of everybody cooperatively trying to do something, this probably doesn't necessarily work. But if it's something being deliberately drained, if someone is being coerced into doing this then maybe give me a spell attack okay all right uh mm, this feels like it could be important i'm gonna go ahead and uh, if everybody's okay with it i might spend some cards here do it. absolutely yeah. yeah do it okay let's take a look at the potty hand I think the best that we have is actually just a 1d8. So if it's okay, I'll go ahead and play that. Do it. Okay. And here it comes. Ooh. 34. 
describe what it is that Kaivar does to get him into this, whether it's a trance, whether it's looks like he's uh, staring at those holograms like they're in the division. What does this look like for Kaivar? Focusing in on that point where the spark of a flame seems to begin to flicker and die down, Kaivar sees that point within the three-dimensional space that he is and immediately hones in on it. Two larger hands on the book, Vox has been placed down on the floor and his two small hands start to cup the area where that extinguishing moment occurs and it's almost like the inverse of everything happens. Not so much a candle being held or a small light within Kaivar's hands, but an absence and the rest of the world around begins to fill with what looks like almost fog. It's very much still perceptible, but within the fog, negative outlines start to appear. Figures, vaguely conducting whatever actions they were working through in the process of this moment within the nine minutes leading up to the point at which this spark started to die down. All right. You begin to see Six figures. Humanoid in nature. Council robes. You see a large summoning circle. You see the conjuring of this arcane energy around these six figures. You see two of them drop to their knees and wither. And like the hair on the back of your neck, you turn from that scene that was there in front of you where you see another host of eight tall, slender, very different individuals that you distinctively know as the Voshborg. You're able to ascertain that the council indefinitely conjured the energy inside to lift this plant off. But more importantly, you know that the Voshborg was here not because of this recycling plant and was denied, but they were here because two individuals perished inside the recycling center, getting it up and off the ground. With all of this rushing towards Kaivar, he realizes that this is well beyond the scope of what he's prepared for. He starts to very panickedly reach out to anyone who is nearby from the group. Uh, uh, th 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 this one, Kaivar. Uh. Yeah. For context, you have named two within the group of six that died, and then eight others, correct? So that's there's a council of six mm -hmm. from Ward Eight that were inside, and then there were the uh, the Voshbor. Two victims, four non-victims, yes. all within the council and then the eight Voshborg. 
That is 12 individuals and apparitions being conjured. Oof. That is a lot. That is 24d6 worth of damage coming towards Kaivar. <laughs> oh no! He is, he is reaching out to prepare you for the, for the notion that he is going to be in an immense amount of trouble quickly. For context, I have 88 HP. I still have some temp HP left. <laughs> so we're going to roll this and we're going to see how badly this Actually, backfires. you wouldn't because you took a rest. Oh, 88 HP it is then. Yeah. Kaivar, Kaivar is going to communicate all of that knowledge to everybody here, mind linking if necessary, because that will be enough to convey the full 10 minutes worth of stuff that's been seen. So... Can I react yes. quick enough to help you mm -hmm. with that damage? No. It will... I mean, it takes a full nine minutes for the whole thing to play out. But I don't know. The in in, in this scary. case, I always expedite everything, whether it's for the player's right. advantage or not. So, this thing's mm -hmm. gonna hit like a truck, dude. You've... Uh, yep, here we go with the roll. Everything is full. already panned out. But yeah. Could I make a potential argument? And I realize this might hurt the rest of us, but considering that Kaivar is mind linking, would that spread the damage out? Negative. Diluting it? Okay. Worth an ask. <laughs> All right. Just, uh, you know, uh, carry, carry me back if things aren't great. Oh, 88 exact, on the door. Exactly his HP. No oh. way. <laughs> With that little bit of communication as the last image of it, I go, I'm going to say, seeing as you were closest, uh, for, this goes directly to Farouk's mind and then jumps to everyone else's. You just see Kaivar fall forward and flop as I go unconscious. Kaivar! Kaivar! What just happened? Okay. Um. I don't know! I don't know what just happened! Mishkin rushes over and just sort of starts vaguely whispering to you, Kaivar, just, it's all right, it's all right, this one is here, this, this one is here, come on. And... Mishkin is going to, still underneath his brown robe, just place one of his hands on his own chest and one on Kaivar's. And he is going to use his new feet, siphoning touch, uh, but he wishes to use it on himself so he is going to cast vampiric touch on himself and i can grant temporary hit points to an ally within 30 feet uh so let me just cast vampiric touch on myself if it will let me there we are uh so I'm assuming I don't need to make a fortitude saving roll because I'm willingly doing it on myself. You do not. So... So I take 12 damage. As you go to transfer some of your essence into Kaivar's empty body, you can feel, still feel that he's warm to the touch. Even his essence still feels like it's there. However, his mind is gone. You will have to make a cleric style one dice challenge revival check to bring his mind back. Okay. What? Does he have to do this what? alone? 
he has entered this alone. Okay. So what am I rolling? When we get back from break, you're going to roll a one. <sighs> Don't do that. <laughs> D20. How's it feel, Ed? On your spell Horrible. attack. Okay. We got any of them uh, advantage cards? <laughs> I mean, you have a choleric, but no. <laughs> yeah, this is way cooler. Oh, damn it, Rebe. You said six, and I was like, this is reasonable. And then you said, and then another eight. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are the suddenly, odds, truly? Suddenly, this got so much worse. 88, 88 on the dot, on the dot is wild. Wild. <laughs> All right, go take a break so we can come back and save him. Yeah, go fill those waters up. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. I believe this qualifies as around and find out. (laughs) I'll be right back. (laughs) This is the kind of stuff I live for. (laughs) Oof. Right. I'll step away as well. I'll be right back. Card was given back. Good to be back, Renegade. Thank you. Uh, you're dead, bro. Lots back up. Hey, geek girl, how are you doing? Doing fantastic. Grabbing a uh, quick beverage before our friend's life is in our hands. Real quick, for the sake of making sure I get all this down, because I, I'm potentially dying for this information. Uh, counselors, right? Counselors and the Voshborg. Yes. Okay. And the counselors were the counselors of Ward 8, or am I getting that yes, wrong? Yes, they're the counselors of Ward 8. Got it. Cool. Given the whole mind link nonsense, that is now in Farouk's brain. Hopefully. I don't know, actually, did with mind linking, would that transfer over to you in time? No, you are, you are the keeper of this knowledge down. right now. We oh. have to get you back. Oh, shit. Okay. Right. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. Oh no. There Bass is trying to get that that uh advantage card out. We definitely he definitely needs to play an advantage card. It's a one dice challenge. <laughs> oh man. I'm not invoking it. I'm not saying the odds are what could happen. Yeah, the uh Oh boy. Hey, West Wolf, <laughs> thanks for the sub. 31 months. Appreciate you. Yeah. Uh... Hey, Bass did actually get the advantage, thank goodness. And uh, just to be fair with you, I totally wasn't thinking in my mind about the repercussions <laughs> that spell. I was literally just going yeah. through the scene. And I was like, so much cooler, <laughs> so much cooler this way. 
it was I mean, it was like, not a planned attempt of like oh how many people can i add to this <laughs> dude ata on the dot is such wildly brilliant storytelling i can't imagine <laughs> not, you know. <laughs> so good This is just, yeah, this is, this is fantastic. Oh, there it is. There's okay. the advantage card. Let's go. Let's go. That's huge. That's huge. Way Thank to go, Bass. <laughs> in the party hand. Uh, uh, I know we've transitioned to mostly party hand. I'm going to check my leftover cards from mine. Let's see if I've got anything big I can send you, but I think the other only big thing I've got is a D6. So Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to refill my beverage. I do also have luckies though, so if you need it, there's, there's those. So we have options. We do have options. Yeah. Very limited options. <laughs> it's very scary. It's very, very, very scary, but it's going to be okay. It's fine. fine. If Kaiba dies, you just, I don't know, find another bug from their nest. <laughs> I'm just quitting Kaiba too. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going <laughs> to let you all know, if Kaiba dies, one of you is taking the book. And that's not a decision that gets made by one of you. That's a decision that gets made for one of you. Ooh. Interesting. Oh, yeah. that's very cool. I like that a lot. So I'm hearing that we should murder Kaiba immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want a little kind of like book thing following you around for the thing, yeah, sure, go for it. <laughs> Mesh can don't... put together a little library. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, it's going to be good. I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be all good. Regardless of how this ends up, this is such a cool story. Even just well, based on the ACA out of 88. You know, it's, it's so I've, cute. <laughs> I've faced death a lot of times on these campaigns, and it's been way more traumatic yeah. than this. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This time, don't you worry, we'll get there. We've had near death nonsense that's more traumatic than this. I just We've had friends die in our arms. This is bad. Oh, goodness. Hey, uh, you've Bass also got a pair of Luckies and a 1d10, so yeah. you, now have, you now have the you have the whole suite of things you need for this, Ed. Okay, lovely. By the Go way, ahead. Sam, I was meaning to say, I love your outfit. I, I thought it, and I was like, I'm going to tell them I love the outfit, and I never said it, because I immediately got distracted. Thank you. It's all black for Mishkin's funeral. Once he killed <laughs> Kaivar, and then I kill him. <laughs> Dress for the occasion. <laughs> Dress for the job you want. Mishkin's yeah. <laughs> Dress to get on an airplane later. <laughs> that means you're in cozy clothes, because that's the best way to air travel. Yeah, good I always and, dress well. Yeah. Hey. Always. Yeah. Even if it's not cozy. <laughs> <laughs> First impressions, baby. Yeah. You know when I when I go to an airport, I don't care anymore. You already see me in my worst. Like you just gotta get cozy pants, like that look professional. Like I'm wearing some wide leg slacks that are so comfortable, and then I just wear a nice looking sweater, super comfortable. And then my sneakers. I'm having a good time. Mm, and just oh, accessorize yeah. with some gold, and it's like, oh wow, she's so put together. And I'm like, that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you make it. That's it's right. Almost, it's almost like she has an entire show on this. What? Yeah. Yeah, on Twitch somewhere. Hmm. How about that? Mm. Hmm. Kind of weird. It's almost like there's also going to be six more episodes after TwitchCon. Ooh. But you didn't hear that from me. But you no, did. We, we did. Just we now. did. I was, we, did. we just heard what? you. I'm pretty sure it was at twitch.tv forward slash Sam, S-E-U-M. That's right. Wow. How did you know? Are you stalking me? Hey, I'm, I'm a big fan. I hope so. Say. That answer better be yes. <laughs> 
I'm a, I'm, I love it. I'll say what I'm legally allowed to say. I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> My lawyer's listening. <laughs> No, uh, I'm gonna see I him actually in a few hours. <laughs> my lawyer's also my bodyguard. <laughs> oh, yeah, you wanna... Sorry, I just saw the most hilarious thing from Becca um, on on Twitter. She's just holding up a sign that says "It is Booty Day." <laughs> I love Becca so much. Uh, it brings smile to my face. I'm gonna link it in the Stormforge chat. <laughs> Becca's amazing. Becca yeah. is amazing. Mm. Still need to finish the frickin' first season of Eason Falls before I can even get on to season two. Dang. Rah. Well, then do it, gamer. Last yeah. episode was super emotional. Ooh. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shock. <laughs> It was just a normal day in Eden Falls. Yeah, super emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Teenagers, always emotional. You have a pick of the litter of cards now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're rolling in. So. so Dawn, I guess we won't kill Kaiva. <sighs> this is your sign that you can't fail. And if you do. This will be... Uh, your spell attack. The okay. DC is 24. This is a single dice roll to bring Kaivar's mind back. Okay. So. I'm you are using an to... advantage card. Okay. Oh, have they already been drawn? Okay, cool. Yeah, they're in the party hand now. You're all good. Thank you, because I'm still not very good at doing that. So I've got advantage. <laughs> I've got a D10. Okay. Yeah, which is a plus three. Yep. And we got luckies that have recently been gifted. Just by, to uh, go over this, since you were rolling yeah. with advantage, the only way to automatically fail the revival is by double nat ones. Which will not okay. happen. A one in What's 500 chance. chance. One in 400. So keep high. Will not happen. And, and I'm adding. What could uh, go D. wrong, really? Uh, plus three untyped. Plus three, uh, yeah. D10 yeah, is plus, plus three. Yeah, plus okay. three untyped bonus. Okay. <sighs> 26. <laughs> Did you roll oh. two sixes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad it's a wizard doing this. <laughs> or a caster, I suppose. Oh, oh my god, that is so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> oh. The fact that you rolled the two of the same number, which you all be like, what's the chance of that? <laughs> and them both being ones. It's so funny to me. <laughs> Just don't entrust me <sighs> with rolls. Oh, you I got trust you. You got the job done and a normal ceremony it would have been 24 26 28 but this is just a one ring to get his mind back to rule them all kaivar Sir. everything comes rushing back <laughs> compounding back into your brain your eyes open up <laughs> You hear a sudden burst of chittering and you see some twitching from the antenna before anything goes on. And uh, there is no reflex to reach for the Vox and communicate normally. You, you just all hear not even words, but a sort of stuttering at first in your mind, like a background static. It, it's clear that Kaivar is still all in there, but it's just sudden shock is taking him a moment to recover. But he does get to and eventually just sort of like slowly reaches for wherever it is that he put the Vox. You feel it lift into your hand as you see that using his wrists, Mishkin is just placing it above you. 
there's a strange sense of unfamiliarity with a situation like this. And almost a coldness about it. Not in an uncaring manner directed towards anyone standing here, but almost in a manner of Kaival's expectations. In a very sort of relieved, but immediately pulled back into the process kind of way, Kaivar readjusts the Vox. Uh, this one, Kaivar sees... sees who took... Let's plant. Yes, yes. Took um, elsewhere. Uh, yes, Callisto. Yes, yes. But before we do, Lolly would like to <laughs> place her hand near you and heal you as much as she can. I mean... Uh, this is a fun thing I get to do because I have four arms. Are all of you within arm's reach? I yeah. would assume so. Why? <laughs> yeah. Kaivar is going to put a hand uh, on each of you if you uh, give consent and is going to mind link the information from the last nine minutes of stuff that he saw to all of you. Because I have four hands and there are four of you. <laughs> and we all have to roll 26. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> now all of it's you. Auto eight, your eight for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how you end it. doesn't watch it when it was the draw. Like, what is happening? <laughs> they were foaming at the mouth. A bunch of idiots. No, 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 kids over there doing tripping over. Kids doing drugs over there. <laughs> uh, it's like a bunch of delinquents in the middle of Hyde Park. <laughs> what a bunch of a holes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 let me heal you. Hey, what is the difference between the top heal and that bottom heal? Is that just like upcasting? Uh, bottom one is an emanation, so it's like an aura around you. Everyone in that aura gets healed by that much. Oh. That's the mass uh, cure, just, but it doesn't oh, no, have a want... it doesn't have a good bonus to it. It's very um, yeah, very lackluster. So did Kaiva heal the twelve that I transferred yes. towards him as well? Right, and you get a 50 is on my bar. from Lolly. That doesn't seem right. It's bigger than that usually, that isn't it? doesn't seem right. I don't know. It gave me like three buttons to push. I don't know what I'm supposed to push. <laughs> I just pressed heal and then healing. Maybe that's right? You know how to heal. Yeah, but I don't remember pressing all these buttons. <laughs> if you uh, recast it and you hit the... Uh... Two square heal. Is there a way to recast it without it taking away one of my spell slots? You can just rewrite it in the thing. Or re, re what it? Um, so if you go to your spell casting page on your character sheet, where it says the number of spell slots you have, you can literally just type in the correct number. So if oh, you spend I can another cheat. One, yeah, you can or, correct it yourself. You can click on the actual icon of heal. That will do it as well. Hell oh, yeah. I said that instead. There you go, 27. Uh, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. Um... All of you have the choice to uh, not consent to the mind link, but Kaiva reaches out to each of you to make sure that information is passed non-verbally to everyone so that everyone can see what he has seen. Uh, I feel like it'd be at the same time as Lolly healing you. She doesn't like to be touched, but she would allow it as she's just like, yeah, whatever, I need to get you healed. <laughs> yeah. I so you would definitely take one of your strong hands. Always. Secret man. They're all strong hands in the end. <laughs> That's right. Catch those hands. Mishkin's just going to help you to your many feet, Kaivar. Is just sort of Lolly would be helping as well after she's done. 
There we are. These ones have you. Come on. Uh. Is everyone okay over here? Yes, no, we're fine. Um, yes, seems yes, my friend has I, taken a I spell. tripped. I, 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 I tripped. And it's weird because Kaivar has not used I in this context before. I think I need to roll a deception on that because Kaivar is trying to push this away. I'm so sorry to jump over that one, Drac. No, you're good. Uh, yeah. You know this is not normal for Kaivar. He was touching all of the cobblestones and eventually one of his hands like slipped into a crack and took him down. Silly bug. Roll that. Deception. I already did. I got mm. I, Yeah, it's out there. No, no, no. I think it's about me. Oh. Mm. Uh. Oh, 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 from 18 to a 2. Let's go. Jeez. 21 though yeah. oh my goodness these numbers <laughs> yeah it happens here. honestly it's just it's silly be careful as they go back up into the air three of them had surrounded you there for a second just to check on the scene now they are back up all right so out of here we're going yes yes uh, let's go yes yes uh, and Lolly, I guess, will lead the way back through the original line. Yeah. Um, out of that area. Are we going the full two miles away? Or what would you all want? Somewhere quiet. Somewhere that we can talk, I think. Okay. Then, yeah, probably just get out of this zone entirely. Yeah. So we do, or we try. Where do you guys head? Honestly, if we're looking for privacy, we should probably just go back to the Amber Forge, right? Yeah, I guess, because that's pretty much yeah. that distance then. All right. You guys head back to the Amber Forge as darkness falls over Stormforge and the lantern lights lead your way well done everyone you got a lot of information out of a very little that was left after taking the long rest congratulations you guys are able to make it back unimpeded sitting around one of the long tables at the Amber Forge. Leftover large meal still looming, so snacks abound. There's a crackle of the forge light in the distance of the room and your familiar creature comforts. Yes. All right. Sweet. Lolly would just be sitting at a table, gesturing for everyone to see. And speaking of creature comforts, as we do sit there, seeing as night has fallen, there is a <laughs> as just sitting on the outside windowsill, just a raven lands and starts tapping against the window. And is is Ziva around at all? I was gonna say he's probably at Colby's. Oh, Staying yeah. late, just being kids, eating pizza rolls, um, uh, what about something, bagel bites, whichever they want. <laughs> oh when God, I'd murder for a bagel bite right now. <laughs> oh. And what about Callisto? Your parents would they be about? Um, I want to roll for it. I know Ifrim would be about for sure. I'll just roll for if if it's a long shift for um B. 
high it's a long shift low is a short shift low yeah they're at home probably a little bit tired but they're, they're both home in which case mishkin will just nod at the raven outside and just looking between you all and then at you lalufia just i'll collect that information when uh, my hosts are upstairs she's gonna lean into Kalisto. you wanna tell your mom to go to bed do i have to? okay yeah yeah, yeah. they're yours not mine Okay. I mean, they, they refer to you as their daughter. So, you know, you're yeah, it's yeah, equal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now that is convenient. You handle um, it. And she's going to lean into the table and just watch you. Kalissa <laughs> <laughs> will turn to um, Ifjan and V. I think Ifjan is probably bumbling around the forge doing any last minute. Um, they, they, they tend to not let. They're like a content creator where they work when they should not be working. Oh, no. <laughs> so how very much dare like, you? <laughs> how dare you? How dare you make me feel so seen? <laughs> All um, put on blast. <laughs> so they're definitely like when the, the forge has been long shut and closed, but they're still working on commissions of things they've been given and handed. Um, whereas V, I think V is much more like they work a normal nine to five. So they're, they're, I think they're already heading to bed. So they're kind of shuffling up the stairs um, with uh, a cup of tea in hand. And Kalisa turns to uh, Ifjan and goes, Hey, mom, um, we're going to be talking warden business. And it's all really, you know, kind of secretive, classified. And Ifjan's interruption just goes, You want me to go to bed? You can just say you want me to go to bed. I will go to bed. Okay, good night. Um, and we'll... Um, I think shuffled off to bed um, with V, um, also with a cup of tea in hand, just mumbling to himself. And I could have just, I could have helped out. Oh, back in my day, I was a bit of an adventurer myself. <laughs> so <you> go, <laughs> so you go up the stairs. So Thirty-four years old, do you still keeping secrets? <laughs> <laughs> And Clitter turns around to Luffy and goes, that went better than I expected, honestly. It was honestly, it was really time. great. Lucky. Yeah. yeah. She must be very tired. Yeah, no. I, I Honestly, even I could tell, but she would never admit it. The front door closes as Mishkin returns with the raven. And looking at you all, just give me a moment. And he's going to head into the darkest corner of the forge. Ideally, he doesn't want to do this in public, um, but you just watch as back turned, he just bites down on the raven's throat, tears it out, and starts drinking its blood. And as he does so, his eyes roll back, and he sees everything that the raven saw since the moment he cast it. As you go full Ozzy Osbourne on your familiar. Your raven goes along for the ride. As this recycling center in the sky begins to make its rotation around Stormforge. But it makes about 180 degrees it begins to drift off into the sides of the mountain further and further until it's completely out of eye shot of Stormforge entirely And then you feel the weightlessness. A 
as the propellers stop. And it begins to drift down before it crashes in an explosion far off into the mountain range. Now covered, buried in snow and rock. And sorry, this is the mountains outside of Stormforge, down on the... Yes, it is a massive range that is underneath us to one side, and then the Forgotten Lands are in the other. Okay. So it's a bisection. Okay. With this information... Uh... Sorry, I'm just writing all of this down. Uh, Mishkin wipes the blood from the fur around his mouth and looking down at the remains of the raven, now once again just bones and dirt, he throws the dirt into the fire of the forge and places the bones inside his satchel and walking over to you all. Well, it appears as though someone wanted to get rid of the evidence. The recycling plant has been dropped down into the Forgotten Lands. Broken, crashed, a wreckage in the mountains. How long ago? Not Are you able long. to tell that? I imagine an hour or so after our six friends from Ward 8 cast their spell, sacrificing two of their number. Interesting. I suppose my question is, as an outsider, why would council members of one of the wards be so keen to cover this up? Well, I think you already know the answer, because it's something they shouldn't be doing. When I came to Stormforge, it was with the information that the Silent Gear had infiltrated several parts of its society. I was not able to ascertain anything significant outside of that, nor was I able to ascertain specifics. But I would not be surprised if some of these wards had been compromised. Do we know exactly where Ward 8 is? Like, I figure we'd know locationally. I mean, you could look it up. Probably wouldn't be something you kept to memory, but e easy information to reference. Then in doing so, would we be able to determine if their ward is that mountainous area? That mountainous area is miles away from Stormforge. It went way out into the distance to where no one could see it crash. Yeah, but there's... You said it's down toward the Forgotten Lands, and each ward is pretty large. Or is it not an ward at all? So these are the, these are city wards. Oh, okay, that's what no you're wardens, yeah. Gotcha. Sorry, not, when you say ward, I think of... Our... I probably should have chose a different word instead of my <laughs> own government vernacular uh since we have wardens okay. <laughs> uh hey let's make it fancy in louisiana call, call let's call eight. it a parish it's it is now it has officially been uh louisiana fied it's a parish oh. eight 
as a Cajun, I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> the only parishes in the U.S. But I've already written it down. You change it to parish. That's why I don't write anything down. <laughs> <laughs> Agent 56. <laughs> okay. Um, from the sounds of it, it's quite far out as well, so investigating the crash will be, if on a list at all, should be fairly low on it before we try and rescue everything else. Parish 8 might be our main goal for now. And what of this Evan Wind? I can see what I can do about getting into contact with who they sent to speak with the Sky Marshals. But from what you've just said, saying that the silent gear might have infiltrated parts of Stormforge, I wouldn't be surprised if Evan Wind is one of those parts. Do we want to split investigation? I could go with Kaivar and Farouk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to check out Parish 8. Mishkin looks at Callisto and back. Um, are you sure? I want to roll something real quick. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Damn, being a bubble. <laughs> I mean, with that, unless someone rolls against it, you can't tell. There's no expression or readable <laughs> expression at least so far on Callisto's face. Let me... I want to see if Mishkin notices it. Oh, oh you mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lufia does for sure. I mean, that makes sense. Twenties <laughs> when you need them, right? Well, nearly twenties, nineteen. The Lufia... I think nothing reads on his face, but you know that with Callisto, a lot of it, it has to do with his posture, like what he does with his hands. I think he's very much a, a kind of very uh, animated when it comes to his hands, and you definitely notice like his fist clench um, as it very clearly seems like he's going to be with Mishkin. She. <laughs> she smirks a little bit. She's not hiding it at all. Clisa no, knows that... damn well what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. But he's also like, splitting up makes sense to him. So he nods and says, that makes sense, yes. Um, at least we, our part of the investigation probably start with the library if we're going to be looking into Evan Wind and see what we can get on their history, um, how established they are in the city and who they have connections with. And then from there, we can start looking for actual specific people information. Well, shall we get some rest first, specifically looking at Kaivar, just to make sure we're all feeling well. Yes, yes. Half tired, half mm. presenting matter of fact. So right. we don't want to take a shot at checking out the crash site. I mean, I'm. We can definitely take give it a try. I mean, it, I can check out Parish Eight myself if you. Too. I do don't think then. I don't think you should go on your own. It's in the middle of the city. I'm not going to do anything. We've run in with the uh, well. You've quite literally run in with the silent gear before, and if they have infiltrated more than just Evan Wind, but also Parish Eight, one day might recognize you. And two, who knows what they do if they do? You and Mishkin went enough then who knows if you alone will be enough of whatever they have in store for you now. There. Then how should we split up? We've got a lot of things and no, not a lot of time. I don't think we should split up at all. We 
we have a lot of ground to cover, Farouk. And with people actively hiding things, we don't have much time to cover it. We have to make choices then. We can't do everything. What would you suggest? When this one, Kava, uh, look at Ward, uh, Parish Eight, uh, Councillors, yes, yes, uh, they, uh, they were rushed. They may have left evidence, clues, within building, yes, yes. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, this one, Kaiva, thinks uh, Farouk is right. Yes, yes. Yes, no. My worry with going down to the Forgotten Lands is that we might lose time the same way we did last time. And it will most definitely miss anything that we can find up here. We were out there for three days and we lost three weeks. Three weeks is more than enough for them to cover any other things we can find up here. <sighs> it's not an easy choice. I understand the allure to get our hands on something other than Paperwork and bureaucracy. I understand. I just don't want us to split up again. Then is it possible in the morning to quickly swing by the library or wherever to get information on Evan Wind? as we you guys got 24 7 access all right yeah. then if that's the case thank you for the reminder farouk i forget sometimes who i am <laughs> if Callisto <laughs> and mishkin would like to go tonight because kaivar needs to sleep <laughs> cabinet kaivar well, uh yes yes <laughs> Kaiba is certainly not going to argue with you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> looking, looking at the insectoid beside him, Bishkin just nods, and there's a faint smile before he looks back to the group. I have been to Pinnacle's Point only once before, but I am familiar with Dr. Piper Yellowstone. They are in charge of the library. Might be able to inquire. I imagine that... A company operating within Stormforge would likely have public records, founders, business dealings, maybe even blueprints as to buildings, potentially. It's worth a try. If you don't mind the company. The more eyes, the better. We've, we're short on time. Well then, the night goes on apace. Shall we go before sunrise? Let's go. Uh, be, uh, before you leave, uh, great warrior, Mishkin. Kaivar is going to open a new page in the book and hold it out to you. This is not a demand, it is a choice. This one is not great enough yet, great warrior. 
understanding and respecting that choice, it almost looks like the book has acknowledged it before Kaivar has. Gently creases back over onto the last page, which showed the events of the day before. Hands out everything that had been shown in the ghostly tragedy and also the conclusion of it. And the moment where you saved Kaivar's life. There are imprints of all of it left. And then just shuts. Meshkin. Yes. Yes. Just not. Kaiva. It's this cupboard. Great. And just stumbles back in the direction of a place to sleep. Molly would stand up and um, gesture. To Farouk, you need help making a bed? I can handle it. Thank you, though. All right. Of course. Feel free to help yourself to anything in the fridge as well. <laughs> and then she's gonna place her hand onto Callisto's left shoulder, the one that is now just fully not lava. Woohoo! <laughs> Um, but then she would lean down and kiss the top of your head. Be safe. And then whisper in your ear and behave. He just lets out a sigh. She squeezes your shoulder like endearingly. And then let's go. Okay. Well, Callisto, contact me if you need anything. And let's be ready to go in sunrise. Oh dear. Good luck. I imagine Kelthod is leaning over and reaching over to the, the answering stone. Ah, oh, God. Ah, I haven't even put oil in the thing. They want to take it out already? Oh, Baldo. <laughs> Simple dwarf <laughs> grumpings as he knows the airship's got to get ready for tomorrow. Well, would you like to lead the way? I would love to. And Callisto would just walk out and begin heading to the library, not even looking back to see if Mishkin's following. Mishkin just glances at Kaiva, making sure he's okay, nods at Farouk, and glances at you, Lelufia, and... You see one of his eyes just narrow a little bit before he... She out. winks. <laughs> Mishkin stalks through the night after Callisto. You guys want to have a small bit of RP while you're walking before we wrap up? I would say that after almost probably an hour of just silence. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's so good. Callis Callisto, you just hear from behind you. How is your arm? Andara, apparently. Mine too, apparently. Yes, no, my mum mentioned that. You don't like me very much, do you? I have no real feelings towards you. Yes, you do. No, trust me, if I did. You wouldn't be here to ask me this question. That walk through the fire that we took together. In Upper City. And we all came together to try and heal your arm. And Mishkin just stops. We 
when you saw my hands. My true hands. I saw your face. And your eyes. And they bore into me, Callisto. And it hurt. Lissad continued walking for a bit, and then they would stop, probably a good 10 or 15 feet between the two of us. And he'll turn around and face you, Mishkin. And you're telling me this because? Because you have no idea what I am. And yet still you cast judgment upon me. I think your misunderstanding what that glare, I suppose, was. Then why don't you elucidate me? I don't care what you are. I hold no prejudice, I'm sure. They have a reputation, but I don't think that should be ascribed to everyone. If that were the case, I'll be a bit of a hypocrite. But you lied either by omission or if you really want to consider the hands you do use, just deception of what you were. And how can I trust someone like that in situations where quite Often, we've been in dire straits to the point where it's a life or death situation. I can promise you this. My hands, these, and the pendants around his neck glow green as do his hands as they appear in front of you, scaled the right way round. And he holds them very, very close to your face. So much so that green just reflects off your skin. These are not a deception. These are the only things I have left. Of the women who took me in. Took me in and protected from the same people who would judge me. Judged me for where I came from. They are my truth. My mothers, both of them. I carry these with me to honor them as best as I can. That is truth. Where I came from. What I was born from. They are not my parents. And they are not who raised me. So if you think I've been lying to you, Callisto. Truth be told, I do not know where I come from. I do not know why I was born the way that I was, much in the same way as you do not understand that arm of yours. But I would not question you. Nor would I judge you. Would you like to know what else I am lying about, Callisto? Yes. What's your involvement with the silent gear? They killed my mothers. They burned my village. 
and as I tried to protect them, they took my hands. And everything I hold dear, that is what they took from me, and I've been hunting them ever since. And I will take from them what they took from me. Purpose. Why? Not why you intend to have revenge. I can clearly understand that. Why did they burn down your village? What did they have with that? What's their goal? I have no idea. I don't know. I have another question for you. What are you willing to do to exact that revenge? Mishkin considers this. There's nothing that I would not do to end suffering. I would not wish for magic users like your wife or your child to fall to the same fate. These zealots, they hate magic in all of its forms and those who wield it. They are a danger to your family, Callisto. So if you're asking me what I would do what would you do to defend your family? The same thing that we intend to do to ours. As four trench coat individuals walk out of the alleyway. Demon, I hereby sanctify you to go back to the same hell that you came from by the light of the scion of the seventh seal as the three others repeat back behind them as they all drop long infernal chain whips down to their hands as you stare into the eyes of a pack of demon hunters. Mishkin just turns to Callisto. I'm starting to notice a pattern when I sneak off with your family. Mm. Let's just think about what the common denominator is here. And you just feel the cold touch of a hand upon your forearm as Mishkin is going to just one moment spell your weapon and basically you will add 1d6 of damage of a spell that I cast to your weapon when you Ooh, next shoot. Okay. Uh, you may not trust me, but um, can I trust you to have my back? Like I said, we're working together. I look after my co-workers. Well, 
It's better than acquaintances, I suppose. And that is where we will pick up <laughs> next week. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Everyone's been waiting for this scene forever between you two. <laughs> Oh. Not one night of sleep for the whole time. Yeah, Lolly knew what she needed to do. Y'all go play games. It is the perfect time to introduce the faction that's been tracking you. No better way to bro bond <laughs> than to beat so up what, some zealots. What were they called again? They are the scions of the seventh seal. Gosh. On it. I Not love that scintillating sibilance. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say the scions of the seventh dawn, and I was like, wow, what a Final Fantasy XIV reference were there. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. <laughs> it's like, I was like it's, wow, they turned evil? <laughs> it, it all lingers back there. It's all this recycled RPG ness at one point. Yeah. <laughs> you can't help your own unconscious. Ah, can't wait to get that wake up call. <laughs> you lolly. Uh, so, oh honey, uh, you know how you tried to call me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling you. <laughs> Kelthud's got the coffee out. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Kelthud quickly so turning into a barley. Uh, <laughs> so Kel, it might be uh, from that ancestor who doesn't know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might as at well this be. point, saving people's asses on a semi-regular basis by this point. <sighs> I'm gonna, I want you to know, Robeb, after you gave us like Kothar as like a fellow, like at least within the Wardens, the closest co-worker we have, I'm gonna be calling on him any chance we get. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want, like, I want to make sure it's established that, like, this is the one person we're actually cool with working <laughs> with. I'm gonna be calling with them <laughs> as often as possible. Yeah, he's the he's sure. the guy that gets shit done over there. You know, he's your Sid. Yeah. He's your handyman. You know, <laughs> he's good people. <laughs> he doesn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> not, with, no, not with Callisto and Lolly being partners <sighs> in crime. Apparently, good lord. What do you mean? I don't know. I like to think that we're. You Before know, this went down, we're actually pretty diligent workers. I'm like, we, we haven't had very that responsible. much trouble. We're We've just been is. blessed with Mishkin. <laughs> you know what he is? He is your legal getaway driver. That's what he is. Yeah. yeah. Oh. He's got his burn ascending stone. It's just like, front, front, front. It's just an ember. <laughs> Not My, that, oh, I like the clap back of the, well, look at the common denominator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mish can be oh, like, wow, oh, so every time good. I'm with your family, I'm like, okay, hold on. Let's see what's actually being constant here. Uh, this scene is so good. I'm going to watch it immediately <laughs> after this. Uh, so I can look at both faces at the same time. Uh, God, uh, you guys are a treat. Onkshu, me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> Farouk hasn't even got done eating snacks yet. Well, that's good, because we're going to need him to immediately turf everybody out of bed oh. and then be like, hey, hey, gang, guess what? It happened again. Yeah. I expect a quick bro beat down over here. This is this is this is a, this is a unifying experience to beat up some zealot bunny hunters. It's going to be great. <laughs> I just need it animated already. I've already seen it in my seen it in my mind. Ugh. Is this like uh, Buffy versus the trio? Just like just some recurring like yeah rubbish demon hunters. <laughs> yeah, just low level yeah. demon hunters just to show that they are actually badass. We're just facing really high level people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Act demon. <laughs> Who was this group chasing? Was it Michigan or was it Michigan. Kalisto? Michigan. Michigan. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, they've been chasing Coming Michigan. Hmm. You're just so popular. <laughs> cat daddy. <laughs> cat <thing>. cat demon. <laughs> Actually, cat technically. Disguise. Cat devil. <laughs> God, I get to finally talk about why I knew immediately what the rock Shasta was as well. <laughs> <laughs> as you said backwards hand is like, I read this when I was researching, and I read this when I was looking through every Did single there? part of the book. <laughs> <laughs> So cool. Love you guys. 
safe travels, Sam, and everybody else that's yeah. going to TwitchCon. Yeah. Love you, you all. Too. I can't wait to play D&D next week because that's really what I want to do. Love you guys. <laughs> Take care. Bye.